Welcome back students. In this lecture we will discuss about Clapeyron's theorem of three moments. Clapeyron's theorem of three moments is an important method in analyzing indeterminate horizontal beams. Okay. So this is basically an equation actually and which establishes a relationship between the support moments and the simply supported moments of a two adjacent spans in a continuous beam okay so basically for applying this particular method this this is, equation is applied over a two spans which are adjacent to each other okay so this basically brings out the relationship that exists between the three bending moments that exist at the adjacent supports in a horizontal beam okay so it is also worth to note at this point that the actual bending moment in any beam can be taken as the sum of simply supported bending moment and the support moment so support moment you can think about it as a fixed end moment and simply supported moment is nothing but whatever is the sub given support in the question assume it to be a simply supported beam take a simply single span and assume it to be simply supported and calculate the bending moment of that so that is called as simply supported bending moment so here is an example it's a fixed fixed beam sub subjected to udl over its entire length L. okay so in this case we know the fixed end moment is wl square by 12 which will be hogging in nature so this will be minus minus wl square by 12 okay and the simply supported bending moment is something which is shown here it is nothing but take the same beam same loading and same length however replace the support with simply supported beam simply supports okay which makes it the bending moment diagram to look like w l square by 8 it's a parabolic curve and it is positive okay so now if you add this diagram which is negative rectangle of minus w l square by 12 and this parabola having a maximum at w square by 12 you will get actually the actual bending moment of this particular fixed end moments which is nothing but w square by 12 at the support and w square by 24 at the center okay this will be again a parabolic curve. Okay. now let's see how the Clapeyron's theorem of three moments equation looks like okay so we we'll take an easy case initially so let's take a uniform loading case okay so let's take two spans a b and b c which are adjacent to each other and it can be a part of a big continuous beam okay let's assume that the first span a b is subjected to a udl of w1 over its entire length l1 and its modulus of inertia is i1 let's assume that the second span b c is subjected to a UDL of W2 over its entire span L2 and its moment of inertia is I2. Okay, so the derivation is basically based on the um, conjugate beam method or momentary method. So, here what they use is when the beam bends, the compatibility condition will be maintained, which means that theta BA should be equal to theta BC. So, by conjugate beam method we can find out theta b a and theta b c so what they use is actually they assume that moment at first support is m a moment at second support is m b moment at third support is m c and also we will find out the simply supported bending moment of the first span individually so it is a parabola with w l square by 8 it is max max center and for sec second span also it is a parabola with this w2 l2 square by 8 okay so basically they do the derivation considering theta b equal theta bc using and finding out them using conjugate beam method so finally you have to so the derivation is not important however you have to know this final equation which states that ma by ma l1 by e i1 plus 2 mb into l1 by e i1 plus l2 by e i2 plus mcl2 divided by ei2 is equal to minus w1 l1q by 4 ei1 minus w2 l2q 
by 4 e i 2 okay so this is the Clapeyron's equation whenever the beams are subjected to uniform load okay let's see a more general case so in this case again we take out two adjacent spans a b and b c out of the long continuous beam here the loading is general so which means that whatever load can be anything however once the load is given you have to draw the simply supported bending moment of that and it can be having any arbitrary shape however you can you should be able to find out the total area of this bending moment diagram of simply supported bending moment diagram of the first span and should be named as a1 and its centroid should be found out from the first support and it should be marked as x1 at a distance x1 okay you can calculate the bending moment diagram simply supported bending moment diagram of the span a2 sorry the second span and name it as a2 and this locate the centroid of the area a2 from the third support and mark it as x2 okay so again here also the moment it's up first support is mp and second support is md and its third support is mc so finally if you find out the Clapeyron's equation it should be taking a shape something like this so in this equation also you have to buy it okay more important one more addition to the previous one so here this is a problem which is having support settlement so in this problem we will consider the support settlement also so the terms delta a delta v and delta c comes up these are nothing but support settlement at sub first support is delta a support settlement at second support is delta v and support settlement at third support is delta c so all this support settlement will cause an, addi an additional slope which will be affecting the theta b and theta b c okay so if support settlements are there the equations get modified to this form okay some additional term will come up here okay so here also ma is the moment at first support mb is the moment at second support and mc is the moment at third support a1 is the area of bending moment for the first support a2 is the area of bending moment, simply support of bending moment for first support x1 and x2 are the central distance okay. delta a delta b and delta c are support settlements and it is been noted that support settlements are taken positive downwards okay. also it is important to note that the Clapeyron's theorem three moment equation can be also applied for fixed beams or propped cantilever even if it is having a single span only so in that case what you have to do is you have to assume a imaginary span having a length of zero and beyond the fixed end so in this imaginary span the length will be zero the loading will be zero and also the fixing moment at the imaginary support will also be zero so here also the minimum should be zero okay so in such so this method can be used in case of fixed set fixed beam and propped cantilever also okay now let's see a very simple example here so here we have a two span cantilever sorry continuous beam abc both span is subjected to utl of 20 kN, which means that w1 is equal to w2 is equal to 20 and both the span is having length same l1 equal to l2 equal to 4 meter so we can use the Clapeyron's equation for uniform loading which is something like this m is the moment at first support mb is the moment at second support and mc is the moment at third support so it is to be noted that for the first support a and the last support c are simple supports at the far end which means that the moment at these points will be zero so we can substitute m a and m c as zero and the only unknown is this intermediate moment at this intermediate support m b all the other values are known so you can calculate substitute and calculate the value of m b which will be obtained as minus 40 <coughs> so this the moment at b is a hogging moment so we will be having a negative moment at 40 and this will be okay 
so this means that at p we will be having a hogging moment of minus 14 so once this moment is obtained this is zero moment and this at c is also zero moment so once this moment is obtained you can calculate the value of r a r b and r c so you already know that at b the bending moment is minus 14 or hogging 14 which is nothing but equal to the hogging moment caused by this UTL which is 20 into 4 into 2 and minus the sagging moment caused by RC which is RC into 4 so substituting that you can calculate what is the value of RC so you get RC is equal to 30 considering that problem is symmetric you can also get that RA is also 30 so once RA and RC is known you can calculate RBS, RA plus RB. You should know the sum of force in vertical direction is zero. So RA plus RB plus R should be equal to 20 into 8. So 160. So RA plus RB plus R should be 160. In that case, RB is equal to 160 minus 30 minus 30, which is 100. So you can also try and draw the bending moment diagram for the same. So you get you will be getting a negative bending moment at support B, a zero bending moment at A support and zero bending moment at C support and since it is a UTL the bending moment will be a curve actually so you can locate where is the maximum also okay so for today's lecture in the next lecture we will see some more problems using Clapron's theorem thank you